We're going to cover a single cooler from Arctic, the Arctic Liquid Diffuser 3 360. In this review, we'll cover four areas, the looks, installation, sound, and performance. Let's get started with the looks of the cooler. The Arctic Liquid Diffuser 3 360 offers a clean and modern look relative to the prior versions. It uses three P12 fans against a 360 millimeter radiator with RGB versions available. The AIO pump has a clean and symmetrical look, perfect for any orientation setup. In regards to installation features, this cooler has the fans already pre-installed and daisy-chained, making it easier than most AIOs. Additionally, this cooler offers the ability to use a single connector to the motherboard that controls all the fans, and also has the ability to break out the connections so you have more control with your fan curve. Here's a quick overview of the installation process. To install the Arctic Liquid Diffuser 3, it's relatively straightforward. First, you have to install the AIO wherever you're going to locate it. You do not have to worry about the fans, so you just have to make sure it's secure from the back side. The fans are already daisy chained and they're connected together by this. They're hidden behind the screws, so you can't have access to this unless you unscrew these components. I personally like to have control over all three fans for my testing, so that's why I've taken it apart. But you don't have to worry about daisy chaining or installing the fans on this AIO at all. Once this is installed onto the bracket and secured, you then want to make sure that you prep the AIO pump. So the AIO pump has a single pump connector and it also has a multi pump connector. So it connects to the AIO pump through this connection and it comes in right here. With that in mind, it's better to install this cable prior to installing the AIO pump or putting any thermal paste on. So once you've decided which cable that you want to use and it's installed onto the AIO pump, you then want to install the AIO pump. You want to make sure you put the thermal paste down before you do it. I like to put it on the CPU. Once the thermal paste is installed and the brackets are installed, you then want to secure the pump onto the brackets. Once the pump is installed, you can then just install the VRM pump or the head of it onto the pump. So all you have to do is just slide it on top and you're good to go. And it's held together by magnets, no more screws, and you're ready to start it up. Before we look at performance, here's a 10 second clip with the raw audio of the cooler. I increased the noise level so the cooler is clearly audible. Now, we know you're here to see how this cooler performs, so let's dive into it. We will first compare this cooler to the average cooler and then show you the results based on the coolers of a similar weight class. For each compare, we will show you the coolers over idle, high, and overclocked temperatures and show two sets of charts, one that looks at performance normalized by percent speeds and one that looks at performance normalized by sound. In our first set of charts normalized by percent speeds against the average of all coolers tested, we have temperatures on the left represented by the saw line, noise on the right represented by the dash line, and percent speeds on the bottom. For this graph, lower is always better. At idle, the Liquid Freezer 3 360 in red performs significantly cooler than the average cooler in blue. As we turn up the heat to 105 watts, we can see that this gap materially grows across the board. Additionally, we see that the Arctic Freezer 360 is noticeably louder across the board, driven primarily by the pump. However, it's important to note that the pump was put at 100% fan speed for testing and can be lowered when high performance isn't required. When we push the cooler to 130 watts, we can see that this cooler offers comfortable temperatures across all fan speeds. And if you want to stay up to date on more benchmarks, hit that subscribe button. In our second set of charts normalized by sound against the average cooler, we have temperatures on the left, noise on the bottom, with lower being better. At idle, we can see that the Liquid Freezer 3 360 provides better cooling for a given noise level. And when we push the CPU to 105 watts, we can see that the Liquid Freezer 3 360 offers significantly better cooling than the average cooler tested at comparable noise levels. And when we push the CPU to 130 watts, we can see that this trend continues. And if you're liking this video so far, don't forget to hit that like button. Next up, we will compare the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360 to a few other coolers in its weight class, including the Noctua NHD 15 G2, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 ARGB, and the IQH150i Elite. Additional comparisons can be found on my website at PCAnalytics.com. At idle, we can see that the coolers provide a similar level of cooling across the board. And as we increase the watts to 105, we can see that the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 has noticeably better cooling at lower RPMs. But this benefit shrinks to minimal levels as the coolers approach 100% fan speed. However, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 has one of the highest noise profiles across the board due to the louder pump. When we increase the heat to 130 watts, we can see that this trend continues. Next up is our chart normalized by sound. At idle, all coolers offer a similar performance for a given noise level. As we turn up the heat to 105 watts, we can see that the Liquid Freezer 3 begins to pull ahead at the higher noise levels. 
And when we push the CPU to 130 watts, we can see that the Liquid Freezer 3 continues to pull ahead. And if you want to see a detailed review on the Noctua NH-D15 G2, you should check out this video.